My writing career began at the age of 12, the day I first read John Steinbeck's Cannery Row. And it occurred to me after putting the book down, some guy just sat down at a typewriter and pulled these things out of his imagination and put them onto the page, which, which to me seemed miraculous. Later on in life, I discovered the writer Tom Robbins and his ability to just make words dance in midair. In a perfect world, if I could get a particle accelerator, I would put Tom Robbins on one end and John Steinbeck on the other and fire them at each other at light speed, and I would be the writer who results as a result of the collision. Once Zubeda arrived here, she was set for a year of surgical processes, 13 different surgeries to restore her and to deal with her scarring. But the most important thing was, until she got to America, she had never dealt with a doctor who didn't treat her in a manner that was torture, really. Imagine having burned skin pulled off your body without any anesthesia of any kind. This was the first time she had ever experienced medical care that wasn't agony, so that most importantly, beyond even the healing that went to her body, she learned trust, she learned gentleness, she learned being handled with respect, which is something that a young girl and a woman in Afghanistan had no idea of what it was like. I was most enthused about getting this job for the chance to be able to tell people about the incredible generosity that has been shown by people all through this story. This began with GIs on the battlefield in Afghanistan who went against orders, standing orders about helping local people to pull this girl into their medical system because they knew she had to have it or she wouldn't survive. All the way down through the people in Los Angeles who took great risk in bringing her here. There was political risk to be had. There was medical risk to be had. And nobody was willing to let those risks stop them. Everybody thought this was something that had to be done because it was right. And so this to me is a perfect example of what it is when we say, what is the American heart? In this story, you can watch it unfold step by step. Subeda represents the emerging generation of women in Afghanistan because she will be the first in two generations now to have access to education. Their education was just destroyed for women. Uh, she will have access to a profession if she wants, which has been impossible in Afghanistan. Most importantly, she'll have access to a sense of herself as an individual and not just as a component of a family or a tribe. Twelve and a half million women in Afghanistan were practically obliterated by the political policies of the Taliban, denied even the most basic medical care. They are not only going to need spokespeople among themselves, but they need fellow women who can stand up and role model for others. No doubt Zubeda is going to be one of them. Well, the potential for red tape was endless for this. We're talking about the military, we're talking about the State Department, we're talking about medical releases and the private legal community. Uh, it, was, it was a swamp of red tape. And yet, I found almost no difficulty in getting to anyone that I needed to speak with. And everybody, everybody without exception, was fully cooperative. The one exception are those individual Special Forces soldiers out on the field who first contacted her, who can't come forward, not because they don't want to, but because they can't have their identities uh, made public. These guys need their anonymity to be able to function. But even they were very helpful in terms of being willing to speak. They just can't speak on the record. Everybody has been cooperative in this story from the ground up. partially as a result of some of the publicity that took place when Zubeda was in America. A foundation has been started and people all over the country have sit in ten dollars, twenty dollars, enough money so that Zubeda's family was moved from that little village of Farah out in the middle of the desert to the city of Harat. The thing that's significant about that is they're for the first time in Zubeda's life within walking distance of a school a quarter of a mile away. She's now enrolled in school, her education has been guaranteed, and her sisters are going to school with her.